Hello and welcome to Earth and Tree Miniatures, a 3,000 square foot dollhouse store located in Amherst, New Hampshire. We're open seven days a week online and in the store. First, I want to apologize to you for my allergy voice. Sorry about that. Next, today we wanted to show you how to frame your own pictures. So right here we have an example of a finished one. We sell framing material. They are 24 inch long sticks. You can stain them or paint them any color you like. There's different designs, different patterns, different sizes. This one's just a smooth rounded one. This one has a groove on the top and the bottom. This one's a much smaller one with two little grooves. But they all have something in common. On the back, they have a little groove to receive a picture. These trims also work as chair rail and toppers for wainscoting. You can also put your wainscoting material right in there and have it lip over and cap it off. Um, as you can see, this one's $3.45. This one's $2.25. They come in different thicknesses and styles and designs, um, but they're all 24 inches long, made out of basswood, ready to paint and stain. So, you can see here we have a finished picture. Picture it has a little texture on it, has the frame all the way around mitered. We've cleaned, um, trimmed the back off with a little bit of paper just to keep it nice and clean and everything. And first, what you'll want to do is find some pictures to frame. I have taken some out of when you get a calendar, wall calendar people still use those. They usually on the back have little samples of each picture of each month. Those are a pretty nice size for inside of a dollhouse. Sometimes people cut little little gift tags, little cards, you can cut those up. Sometimes there's catalogs out there that sell actual framed pictures and you can cut those out. Also, um, sometimes people print their own pictures online. If they aren't copyrighted, you can download those and print them off of a color picture, color printer. So I've picked this one right now for one of our samples and um, and this one, this one that's from a um, calendar. This one was already previously cut out that I found out for sale here in our store. It has a back on it that I don't really like, so we'll definitely cover that up with paper after. And this one you can see, I just got the back of the calendar. So this one already has <clears throat> a stiff cardboard thickness to it, but this one's too thin and too flimsy. So what I've done here is just taken a piece of cardboard. You can use a cereal box, manila folder, anything that's got some thick um, substance, paperboard, and um, I've already traced this picture out right on the piece of paperboard. So I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna cut that out so I can make it a little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier, easier to frame. If it's too thin and um, you try to frame it, it'll just wiggle around and it's not strong enough for the framing process. So once we have that piece cut out, we can glue this right on like so. And you don't have to worry about how perfect it comes because again, that lip for the picture framing material will cover the edge. You can use, yes, wallpaper paste, that works great for gluing this on. You can also use some Mod Podge. Um, the white tacky glue, you could try that, but most likely it will give you the appearance of seeing where the glue got all spread. It gives a little raised area where you've spread the glue when you use the white tacky glue. So I try not to use white tacky glue. But if it's all you have, you could brush it on like so. And it should turn out fine for a picture. You're not doing a really big area or anything like that. So we just need to nicely, evenly coat this. Like so. We can put our picture right on there. Make sure you flatten it all out and smooth it down so it's got more rigidity. Okay, 
You can set that one off to the side and let it dry. Now this one that is already got a board on it, I don't want it to look flat and shiny like it just came out of a magazine picture. So Mod Podge also comes in handy for this. You can do some little dabbing, little brush strokes. You're not trying to make it look all striped. You're trying to make it look like it has a painted finish. As if this were a real painting, you would see the brush strokes. You would see the texture and you would see the layer. So this gives it a little bit more dimension than just being a shiny magazine picture. So just coat that all over so it looks nice and white. I can put a little more on, thicker, but you don't want those brush strokes are too big for the scale. So you kind of got to go afterwards on top and kind of little tiny brush strokes. Turn your brush around different directions. So when you're painting flowers and trees, it doesn't all come out one little direction at a time. Just keep going all over. This will just give it that painted textured look. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside to dry as well. And now we're gonna go back to the first one that we made right here. It's dry enough that we can start at least cutting some of the framing material and then it can finish drying while we're working. So here I just took a piece already and I just did um, a stain marker on it. Uh, Min Wax makes these. I just love them because they make it quick and easy, but you can paint it any color. And you want to paint the edge too because you're going to see that on the back. You don't have to worry about the groove. That's not a part you're going to see. So there's a couple different ways you can miter these corners. We have miter boxes little miniature miter boxes and little miter box saws. And they have um, a little lip on the edge so you can set it on a table so it won't slide away across from your work surface. But my table edges are kind of rounded so it doesn't work very well. Um, and there's little channels in the bottom that will help you kind of sit your wood in there. This is already set up with a 45 degree angle right here and then your straight, your 90, right down the middle. And since we're going to be creating a picture frame, we're going to be doing 45s on each corner. So with the picture frame looking right at me, I'm going to do the top piece first. I want my picture frame angle this direction. You can always draw a little pencil line on there if you need help visualizing or looking at something. If you don't have something made already, you can draw a little diagram of which directions the miters go. That way you can just help you remember how to lay the stick in the miter box. So we're gonna lay the face down right here and I'm gonna lay it in this little channel so it prevents my piece from sliding around. If I go up here in the end, it makes it tip down too far and I really need it to lay flat. So I'm just gonna lay this back part right here, right in that channel and it kind of hugs it nice and snug and makes it flush. I'm gonna take my miter saw right in the 45 degree slot to match that angle that I wanna cut right there. And just a little light sawing action. You don't wanna push hard, it binds up the saw. The saw wants to do all the work, so you just have to lightly back and forth until we're all the way through. And once we're done with that, I didn't grab any, but you can touch this up with a little bit of sandpaper, um, a little nail file, anything simple like that to just clean up the edge if it gives you any fibers. So now we want to measure where we want this to be cut to length. So right here you can see I want this back lip part even with the back of the picture. So we're just going to mark right here with our pencil. We can do a little bit of the direction like that to give us a reminder of when we put it in the miter box what direction it needs to go. So we can lay that back down here and we can lay this in the miter box. And since we marked it, we can lay it either way because we could lay it over here. And we'd be able to see that we're right on that direction. We could turn it around and it switches over there. Either way, whatever preference, left-handed, right-handed, doesn't matter, whatever works for you. Just hold your piece down nice and tight. And again, right in that little channel so it doesn't slide around. And just back and forth again. Some of our tools are a little loved, being used every single day, so they might not be super sharp. And we'll test it, make sure it fits, look at the back and 
and you can always, we'll continue to check it when we do the next piece to make sure that they're fitting together. Now, this has the opposite miter because it's the leftover cut from that one. So the first thing I need to do is, again, cut off the proper starting miter in the corner right here. Then we can mark it for the fit, right there. So now we can hold it up to the already existing piece that we have right here. Make sure we like the way they meet each other. Then we can flip it over and make our mark for length. You can definitely do all your measuring with a ruler. Sometimes I just like to fit it right to the actual piece I'm cutting and not have to worry about remembering my numbers or writing them down with a ruler or anything like that. Now, we have another tool here for cutting if you don't want to use a miter box. We also um, have a handheld easy cutter, a miter cutter. Ours is very dull, lots of use. Um, you can have the blade sharpened, but this will at least show you another way to cut. This right here gives you a 45 degree angle, this little ledge on the side. So it's just like the grooves on the miter box. You don't have to wonder where 45 is. So you hold it right on there and line it up with your line, just like this. It gives your cut. And since mine is a little dull, I have to do one more second cut right up here on the tip where it's a little bit sharper. But typically, if you have a brand new sharp one right out of the box and you don't use it a million times, it'll be ready to go nice and sharp, and it turns wood into butter really easy to cut instead of having to saw back and forth with a miter box saw. So now we can go back to this picture here. Oh, it still needs a little more drying time. We'll know it's ready once all of the surface on that has turned clear. So a couple more to cut on this one. Again, this is the opposite direction because this is our cutoff. So we need to first clean this up with the correct miter angle. One snip, bring it up here, snip it again. Don't land that on your picture. Now we have this one here. We can actually just fit them all upside down at this stage. It's a little bit easier so you can just see the back. I can trim that paper a little there. There we go. So we're happy with the way it touches all the way around. We make another mark right here. Hold our miter cutter one more time at 45, snip there. There. You can see I've got these pieces, three of these pieces all cut to fit that one too. To get you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and trim this paper off. You see, I didn't quite get it perfect right there. So it doesn't prevent me from getting onto my. And if you're not perfect at cutting square, like same as me, I'm not perfect at cutting things square. You can always use a metal ruler and a box cutter, an X-Acto blade, anything like that. So you're sure that you're cutting it nice and square. But usually I just kind of rely on the framing material to make my work look a little better. Get this lined up here. I might need, one of these might need to be a little longer over there on the side. You can see how that one's kind of a little shy right there. So I might have to cut a new one there. Or sometimes it just looks good enough from the front. It really depends. When you're all finished, you can see how good it looks when it's done. And this is my last one. Lay that in here. And put 
those together and draw my last cut. Use the miter box one more time so we can see that again. Lay that right in there in that 45, line up that pencil line. Saw right through that. Okay, so now we can flip this over. This picture is square. So if one doesn't fit perfectly right, we can swap it for another side. Oh, I was wrong. It's definitely not square. It's wider than it is taller. All right. So these almost line up as nice as I'd like them to. They're a little shy on the side, so I can definitely trim my picture. Kind of little cheater method. I'm a very big fan of simpler, shorter methods. If you can't trim your picture, you can definitely cut another little piece from your framing material. There's more than enough material in one of those sticks for two picture frames. Okay, we'll test this one more time. Make sure we're happy with how they all meet up. There we go. And then we can glue that all together. Or if you want to do a finish on it like this one, we can definitely do that before we frame it off. This one's almost dry. We've got one more. I've cut three pieces already. So I've got one more side piece to cut right here. So I can actually use this piece as my gauge to cut one more if I don't want to hold it up against my picture. So I'll cut my correct angle for my starter right here. And then I can hold it right up here. Flush to flush. Make a trim. Make my line right there so I know where to trim it. Right on my mark. Trim one more time. And we could see how this one fits. And even then this one's a little wet, I can still start gluing this one together so you can see the finished gluing it on there. Let's make sure we're happy with all the pieces. Looks like it's gonna be a good fit. Yep, so can glue this one on. So I like to use the Aileen's White Tacky. You can use Elmer's, any white tacky glue that dries clear. Put a little glue right in the channel like that. A little dot on each edge there. Okay, while we're gonna start doing this, I want to put some texture on this one too while we're, while we're waiting. Um, and you can see a little bit of white glue oozed out a little, I can lift that up, clean that off. I don't have to really worry about it because we want that texture on there and it does dry clear. It's not really a big deal if it stays, but if it bothers you, you can definitely, definitely wipe it off before you're all done with a brush or your finger, paper towel, whatever you need. All right, we'll let this one dry over here. Oh, we're finishing up the last one, the other one. Okay, so I'm gonna take that glue off so I can just kinda smooth that off a little bit with my finger there. So a little bit goes a long way in the glue department. You really don't need much. Put it on either end to get it to stay together like that. This is a great way to put a little art in your project, any scale. Obviously these tiny little framing materials here would work really well with half scale and even maybe a little bit bigger one with, with a quarter scale. Clean some of that glue up with my brush and this 
so you can do any scale when you figure out your size of your picture. What people also like to do is they like to take photographs that they actually have, family, friends, places they've been, and you can take a picture of it and shrink it down, or if you know your printer well enough, you can scale it down that way. Also, if you um, have any drawing apps on your computer, you can definitely change the size and the scale of the image because obviously the pictures we print out for ourselves, the four by six are much too big for a dollhouse, but you can easily shrink them down. All right, so this is gonna set up and dry and I can kinda fuss with it here, fuss with it there and wiggle it around until I'm happy with it and clean up the glue and set that one aside. That one can use a little more work, a little touch up sanding, a little touch up staining on that one over there. We'll set that off to the side. Then we have this one here. Actually, what we're gonna do with this one, we're gonna cut our backing piece of paper. So normally I'd probably wait for this to dry a little bit more, but since I don't wanna bore you guys any further, you can just center it so you can kinda of see a little bit of the frame like that. Any plain piece of paper, nothing special, nothing fancy. And again, if you don't love cutting things by hand, you can definitely use a ruler and a straight edge to see if this fits on here and be happy with the way it covers up the back. And if so, we can definitely apply some more Mod Podge and stick that on there. And we will have a finished picture front and back just needs to set off dry and you can have wall hangings in your project. I hope you join us next time and check out our other videos. We've got a channel on YouTube. We've got Instagram TV and we definitely try to put some pictures on Facebook as well. A few of them are tours of the store. Try to do a little bit of something for everybody. Feel free to email or call or message us with any questions. But there you go, a little tutorial on painting for your next little project. Thank you.